Okay, this is the first video lecture in our new unit, the cell cycle. Please make sure you're filling in your notes organizer as you watch the video. As always, pause if you need to, replay if you need to. Okay, let's start by talking about the difference in the way cells divide for unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. We're going to focus on multicellular organisms in class. But unicellular organisms reproduce, so bacteria, they reproduce through a process of binary fission. This is asexual reproduction. This is simply like sort of the cell just sort of splitting in half. That is binary fission. Multicellular organisms, on the other hand, reproduce through a process called mitosis. It's much more complicated. It's a process of growth and repair. So this is how you know, we make more cells so that the organism can grow larger, and also how we make more cells to repair injuries. So why do we need to do this? Well, here's the problem. As cells grow, their volume increases much faster than the surface area. And the problem with that is if the volume, the inside is getting too big for the outside, then the outside, meaning the cell membrane, can't support the inside with enough nutrients and can't let out enough waste. So the cell is not able to supply itself with enough nutrients and it's not able to expel all the waste that it needs to do because it doesn't have enough surface area. So you can see here as the cell is getting larger, its volume is increasing at a very fast rate, whereas its surface area really isn't increasing all that quickly. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's, too, it's getting too big too fast. So that's where the cell cycle or the cell division process comes in. So ultimately, the cell division process prevents the cell from becoming too large. It's also the way that the cell reproduces so that you can grow because as you're growing, you're getting more and more cells. And as you heal certain injuries, so if you get a cut on your arm, you need to be able to replace those skin cells. And the only way you can do that is if you make more skin cells. Cells reproduce by a cycle of growing and dividing called the cell cycle. Okay, so the cell cycle is this orderly series of steps in which a cell duplicates its contents, so it doubles what it has inside of it, and divides, so that when you, what you end up with is two new cells that are identical to each other, and more importantly, they're identical to the original cell. If you didn't duplicate the contents, then you would end up with cells that have half of what they're supposed to have, but that's not what we want to happen. We want to make sure that the two new cells have everything they're supposed to have. So the cell duplicates its contents, and then divides to create two new identical daughter cells. Now, different cells divide at different rates. Liver cells, for example, only divide every year or so. That is why when you do damage to your liver, it is so harmful to your body because your body can't replace those cells fast enough. So someone who causes damage to their liver cells by drinking alcohol, for example, they can't replace those cells fast enough and that's how you end up with that horrible disease called cirrhosis of the liver. The epithelial cells that lie in your gut, on the other hand, divide more than once a day. So their cell cycle is just a couple hours long, which makes sense when you think about it because they live in sort of like this you know, high acidic environment um, that's constantly being destroyed. So you need to be able to replace those cells all the time. Okay, there are three main stages of the cell cycle. There's interphase, there's the division of the nucleus, and then there's cytokinesis. Interphase is where you have the cell spending the majority of its time. This is the cell doing its normal thing, maintaining homeostasis, carrying out normal cell functions, and importantly, it's replicating its DNA. Then you have the actual division of the nucleus and the division of the, of the DNA. We're, uh, today we're going to be talking about mitosis, later we'll talk about meiosis. And then you have cytokinesis, which is the actual cutting of the cytoplasm so that you have two entirely separate new cells. Okay, so we're going to start with interphase. Look at this diagram here. All of this G1, SG2 is interphase. Mitosis and cytokinesis just make up this little portion. So you can see a lot of time is spent in interphase compared to mitosis and cytokinesis. So let's talk about why that is. So the first stage of interphase is the G1 phase. This is where the cell is growing and carrying out normal cell functions. So you can see there's a lot of time spent in G1, maintaining homeostasis, doing its normal thing, getting larger, G1. Then comes the S stage of interphase, or the synthesis stage of interphase. So what is being synthesized, that's what the S stands for, it's the DNA. This is where you have DNA synthesis, or DNA replication. So the DNA is copied so that the cell can split and have you know, two new cells that have full sets of DNA. This is a very important step. And then finally we have G2 of interphase, which is where the cell does its 
sort of last checkpoints to make sure that it's ready to go, the DNA was duplicated, it's, it's good to divide. You don't want to divide a cell that has any errors in it or you're going to make more cells that have those mistakes in them. So this final checkpoint is a very important step. Okay, before we can start talking about mitosis, I'm going to use the term chromosome a lot. So you need to know what I'm talking about. You've probably heard that before, but let's talk about what it actually is. So chromosomes are carriers of genetic material, DNA, that are found in the nucleus. This information has to be copied in order to be passed on to future generations. So label your diagram under nine on your notes organizer. Okay, pause on this if you need to. You know, label the base pairs, label the double helix. Um, label the centromere, the telomere, the chromatids, and then this whole structure here makes up the chromosome, that X structure. Okay, uh, DNA usually exists in a form called chromatin. That's all of this stuff here. This is sort of this long, loose, winding strands of DNA that eventually condense into chromosomes. So that's what's happening here. They're condensing to form these structures called chromosomes. So you don't always have chromosomes within your cell. Most of the time it's just existing so sort of like this, these loose strands of DNA. So they condense into chromosomes before the cell divides and then they sort of perform like a little dance which is what we're going to talk about next so chromosomes the x structure are made up of two chromatids which are held together with a centromere not to be confused with centrioles which you know scientists love to confuse you by making things all sound the same so a chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids so here's a chromatid here's a chromatid they are held together by the centromere now, every cell in your body has 46 chromosomes, Tw a set of 23 that you got from mom and a set of 23 that you got from dad. All those normal body cells are called somatic cells. They are diploid, di, meaning two, because they have two sets of 23. There's only one cell in your whole body that is not diploid, that has some other number than 46, and those are your sex cells, so females, eggs, males, sperm. Those cells, called gametes, only have 23 chromosomes, so we call them haploid, meaning they have half the number of chromosomes. And the reason for that is so that when they come together, when the mommy and daddy love each other, the eggy has 23 and the spermy has 23, so that during fertilization they get restored to that full 46. But every other cell in your body, your somatic cells, are diploid, meaning they have 46. Your sex cells are the only ones that are different and they have 23. Okay, so in a chromosome, so here's a chromosome, we have two sister chromatids. The sister chromatids are the replicated chromosomes that are held together with the centromere. So each chromatid is completely identical to the other in that chromosome. That's very important because in anaphase they get separated. That is how you know you're ending up with one full set of DNA in each cell because they each carry an identical copy. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if not, It'll hopefully make more sense when we talk about the steps of mitosis. Here's someone's karyotype, meaning the map of their chromosomes. So you can see if you counted them up, you have 46 because you have 23 pairs. This last pair is the one that determines the gender. So this one has two X chromosomes. So this would be the karyotype of a female. Okay, so I talked about this a minute ago, but we have these checkpoints right before the cell divides. Those are called cell regulators. They're chemical signals telling the cell to, that it's okay to divide or that it's not okay to divide. And those cell regulators are cyclin, CD, CDK, and that together makes up checkpoints. So it's the, these together sort of make up a process that stop the cell and go, okay, can I go on or can I not go on? And we'll talk about what happens if it goes on if there is a mistake, um, because there's several different pathways that a cell will follow. It's going to either try to repair itself or it's either not going to be able to repair itself. So we talked about the three main, we're on the back side of your notes organizer here, we talked about the three main stages of um, the mitosis cell cycle, which is interphase mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis is then further divided into four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So there's a saying I want you to remember, and you can write this at the bottom of your paper. I PMAT C. I meaning interphase, PMAT meaning the phases of mitosis, C meaning cytokinesis. So I PMAT C. Write that down because that's something that's going to help you remember this. You got to remember the order of all this stuff. So let's start with prophase. I'm going to go kind of quickly. 
pause if you need to, make sure you get this information. Draw a picture and write what's happening in each of those little boxes. So in prophase, we have the chromatin condensing into chromosomes, so chromosomes are forming, and the nucleus is disappearing. That's the two major things happening in this step. You also have the centrioles that are forming that are then going to start producing spindle fibers, um, but that is to be discussed more at a later stage here. This is the longest phase of mitosis, not the longest stage of the cell cycle, that's interphase, but of the mitosis portion where the nucleus is dividing, um, this is the longest stage. Okay, next comes metaphase. Meta means middle. So the chromosomes are attached to these spindle fibers and uh, the spindle fibers sort of line them up along the middle of the cell. So meta means middle. This is what you saw in the onion root tip lab. Okay, then in anaphase, the, the spindle fibers shorten and the chromosomes get pulled apart. So now they are called chromatids. Okay, so they're referred to now as chromatids because they've been separated from their chromosome form. So we've got, so we've got a set of chromatids over here, a set of chromatids over here. They're sort of heading towards the opposite poles of the cell. That is what a real life cell looks like in anaphase. And then in telophase, Basically, whatever you did in prophase gets sort of undone during telophase. So you had the nucleus that was disappearing in prophase, in telophase it reappears. You had the chromosomes forming in prophase, in telophase the chromosomes are unwinding or unforming back into chromatin. In animal cells, the cell membrane starts to pinch in. And you're going to see the difference here in a second during cytokinesis. So in cytokinesis, the cell membrane pinches in in an animal cell and causes what's called a cleavage furrow. Okay, in a plant cell, there's a cell plate that forms between the two nuclei. So in during cytokinesis, the cytoplasm is cut. Now we have two nuclei, now we have two complete daughter cells, but there is a difference in how that happens in animal and plant cells. Animal cell, you have the cleavage furrow. Plant cells, you have the formation of the cell plate. That cell plate is what eventually becomes the cell wall. That is why plant cells look sort of like little bricks because they have those cell plates that form and eventually become the cell wall. So again, here's what it looks like in real life. There's the cleavage furrow. There's the cell plate that's forming. That's going to become the cell wall. And then you can see the difference between all the cells and sort of how they would look between an animal cell and a plant cell during mitosis reproduction. Okay, so what happens if something does go wrong? We've all had some sort of experience with cancer. So what actually is cancer? Cancer is actually uncontrolled mitosis. It's the uncontrolled growth and division of cells. You basically have a, have a cell that doesn't get the signal to stop dividing. It doesn't have those cell regulators. So it's just constantly dividing, dividing, dividing. And the problem with that is now all of these cancerous cells are taking nutrients and supplies away from the good cells, the normal functioning cells. So they, they kill an organism by crowding out the normal cells resulting in a loss of tissue function. So blood is going to these cancerous cells, um, nutrients, you know, food, water, all of that is going to these cancerous cells and taking away from these normal functioning cells. And the reason that, that these changes occur in the regulation of cell growth and division um, is due to mutations. And some of those mutations, we're not entirely sure of why they happen. Sometimes they happen randomly. But a lot of times they happen because of some sort of substance. And those substances that cause cancer are called carcinogens. You've probably heard that term before. We know that cigarettes are car a carcinogen. We know that cigarettes cause lung cancer. So they cause those cell regulators to stop working and to give these signals to keep dividing keep dividing, keep dividing, and then you can have the formation of a tumor taking away nutrients from the good cells, and that's when cancer becomes a major problem. Okay, so if, can, if you have a cell that has an error in mitosis, one of the options is to go through a programmed cell death called apoptosis. This is sort of like cell suicide. Now, a lot of times this is a good thing, okay? This, this occurs in the fall when trees, you know, sort of cut off a leaf. They don't want to supply that leaf with, supply, with nutrients anymore because the temperatures are cooling down. The cells go through apoptosis. This happens in your hands and in your feet. Um, you start with cells in between all your fingers. Those cells go through apoptosis. Now we don't have webbed feet and webbed hands anymore. So that's a good thing. Um, hopefully this occurs when a regulator senses that something is wrong prior to cell division. Okay, but if it doesn't, here are the pathways. So we have a healthy cell. If there's a mistake, it either repairs those errors 
or if the mistakes continue, then it goes through apoptosis, and that's the answer to your last question.